Hello viewers, 4DIYers here, back on the tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a walkthrough video on troubleshooting if you have a faulty head gasket on your vehicle. Now this particular vehicle I am doing the demonstration on here today is a 2003 Dodge Dakota equipped with a 4.7 liter V8. Now there is various symptoms which you can look for to determine if the vehicle has a faulty head gasket. Now this particular vehicle here I am working with it doesn't actually have a faulty head gasket, but I will demonstrate what the telltale signs are if you do have a faulty head gasket. Now with this being a V configuration engine, we'll have four cylinders on this side and four cylinders on the opposite side. Now this does have two separate head gaskets for each side. The head is not connected. Now you will have other engines, which would be like an inline four and inline six, which does have one solid head gasket throughout now the Now there's three end. different ways which you can find the coolant system going down on the vehicle if you do have a faulty head gasket. One of those being, you'll have a leak between the water jacket and the combustion chamber. Basically what happens there is the coolant sucked into the combustion chamber during the combustion cycle is then evaporated and you will have steam exiting out the tailpipe. Next one being is you'll have a leak between one of the water jackets and the oil supplier return holes. What can happen there is depending on which one has a greater pressure, you'll either have the coolant leaking into the oil or you'll have the oil leaking into the coolant. Now the next one being, is you'll have one of the water jackets leaking to the exterior of the engine. Therefore, we don't have any internal leaks and you will notice a buildup of residue outside the block of the engine. Now, a couple different ways which doesn't involve the coolant leaking on the vehicle will be, one, you'll have a leakage between the cylinders. And what this can cause, this can cause your vehicle to run erratically, idling problems, uh, anything of the sort. And another one being is that one of the oil supplier return holes through the head gasket can leak to the exterior of the engine. Therefore, you will find your oil level continuously going down depending on the severity of the leak and depending if it's a supply or return hole. And one of the last common issues you can look for is your temperature gauge on how the vehicle does operate. Now, normally a vehicle will be around the halfway mark. It does depend. It may be lower or a little higher. But one of the common issues that if you do have a faulty head gasket is that your vehicle will continue to run on the hot end of the temperature gauge. Now if your head gasket is leaking between a water jacket and a combustion chamber, there's a couple of different things we can look for here. One being that considering the moisture content or water content is being evaporated in the combustion chamber during the combustion cycle, it'll exit out your tailpipe. And one of the prominent things which you will notice with that is steam exiting your tailpipe. Now this may be dependent on the severity of the leak or where it is located of how that'll respond. Sometimes you will notice it when the vehicle is cold, other times you'll notice it when the vehicle is hot. Now obviously it does depend. Now another thing which you can also look for here too is if you do go ahead and remove the spark plugs, you will notice one of the spark plugs do have uh, somewhat of a beige tint to the tip of it or uh, somewhat of a crustiness to it. Now again, depending on the location of the leak, it will depend on which spark plug it will be here. So obviously, we have an eight cylinder here. It'll be either one or two of those cylinders depending on where the leak is. Sometimes we could have a couple different leaks where it may be in a couple different cylinders or it'll just be directed to one cylinder. Now, if you do have a leak present between the combustion chamber and one of the water jackets here, another thing we can also look for here is either in the coolant reservoir tank or where the rad cap is where you can remove it. Now, this obviously does depend on your vehicle's make and model and how the design of the system is. You will notice when the vehicle is running. Now, if you do go ahead and remove the rad cap here, do that when the vehicle is cold and before you start it. Then allow the vehicle to start up. And what you will look for here is just small bubbling in there. And what that is there is that any excessive amount of pressure that is in the combustion chamber, it'll escape into a water jacket and then slowly work its way up to the top of the system, either the reservoir tank or the rad, it does depend. Another test which we can also do to determine if we do have a leakage between one of the water jackets and the combustion chamber is a hydrocarbon test. What this will show is when you do hook it up to the system, you'll have a specific type tool that does plug onto your rad cap. While the engine is running, you will have a certain type of liquid in there. And what'll happen is any of those hydrocarbon present in the coolant system will slowly exit towards the top of the system. This will be the highest point, obviously, where this tool is placed and this fluid will change to a different color. Now, if your head gasket is leaking between the water jacket and one of the oil supplier return holes in the head gasket there, there's a few different things we can look at here. One being the engine oil dipstick, another one being the fill hole in the valve cover here, or depending where your fill location is located. Another one would be either the uh, your rad cap or the reservoir tank, and another one being underneath the engine when you do do an oil change would be uh, just your drain plug. Now, with regards to the engine oil dipstick. Now this is to check your oil level. Now the obviously locations do depend on your vehicle's make and model. 
Now with this one here, you will notice that there is a metal portion that goes all the way down in order to check the oil level. A lot of times with that metal portion, depending on the quality of the steel that is used and how long your head gasket has been leaking for, there is a possibility that could be rusting as well. Obviously moisture gets in the surface of the steel there and it does cause it to slowly corrode away. Next, when you do fully remove that dipstick, another thing which you can also notice is that that little bit of oil that is present on the tip of the dipstick, if it does have a light brown or somewhat of a milky substance to it, obviously there is water prominent in your oil reservoir. And what that does there is that'll mix in with each other and it'll obviously give you that. Now, there's a couple different things which could cause that. One being, obvious sign would be the head gasket leaking. Now the next one, depending on the ages of your vehicle, and we are located because it is an emissions requirement with the newer vehicles and the higher emission standards you do have a closed system where the ventilation system does work now if you do have a open system where it just does vent out in the atmosphere if you found that you've driven in uh, some severely deep water there's a possibility that water could have just ended up in your uh, sump next moving on with regards to the oil cap here now a lot of times what can happen here is if you do have water prominent in the oil system what can happen is that moisture will evaporate and there will be a sludgy milky light brown buildup underneath the cap and also around the opening of your oil fill cap now this does depend this one does extend off the valve cover some you will have right on top of the valve cover now that is a sign that there is moisture in the system but that also could mean another thing your head gasket doesn't necessarily mean it could be leaking but what could happen is that Maybe you don't let your vehicle come up to operating temperature right away or you do a lot of short runs with it and that can also cause a similar sign. So again, this is a, isn't a 100% sign. This could be a possibility though, but don't take this one sign as being a faulty head gasket issue. Now another sign which we can also look for here, depending if your oil is entering into your coolant system, is if you do remove the coolant cap or look in the reservoir tank, you may notice a milky substance as well or your coolant will be darkening up. Now this will depend on your vehicle's make and model of what color the factory coolant is. Now in this particular vehicle here, it is a somewhat of a fluorescent green. You will have ones that will be orange, uh, maybe a blue. It does depend. It will vary. But when the oil does enter that system there, it will darken the fluid up quite a bit. It will give it somewhat of that milky substance and it obviously does depend how long it has been leaking. For. Now with regards to the drain plug aspect there, when you are draining the oil on your vehicle, you will notice that same thing with the milky substance either on the cap or the dipstick here. You will notice when you do drain the oil, it will be somewhat of a light brown or milky looking uh, liquid that does come out and obviously there is water present in the system. Now as for the last way of which the head gasket can leak here. Now that is between the water jacket and the exterior of the engine. Now obviously here with the head being a separate portion compared to the block of the engine here you do have a head gasket in between that and what can happen there is it can leak to the exterior of the engine. Now it does depend on whether it be down on this side, on the exhaust side, or it can be on the intake side. You can even have it on the front side or the rear side as well. Now it is harder to see on this engine here, and especially with a lot of the newer vehicles, but you will notice a seam line and it should be right under where your upper intake does bolt up or where the um, exhaust manifold does bolt up. It should be about, I would say roughly about an inch below that. Now this obviously does depend on making model of vehicles but you should notice somewhat of a residue on there. Now with this being an older vehicle it was a little easier to see the transition line between the head and where the block is here. Now you see you have the exhaust manifold up on the top side here. Now what that does that bolts right straight directly to the head. Now it just below that there it's a little harder to see there but you can see there is a small transition line between the head and the block. Now on the intake side here just to give you a little better idea here you can see where the intake does bolt up to the head on the opposite side of the exhaust manifold and you see the little square piece sticking out there well that is where the block begins right there so there is a transition line right in that area there and it will continue all the way around the perimeter of the head and the block. Now there is a couple different tests which we can do on the system in order to determine if the head gasket is leaking. Now one being with the coolant system here, we can either do a pressure test or we can do a leak down test on there. Now what that determines is that there is a leak present in the system. Now with that being said, it won't determine 100% if that is actually your head gasket leaking or possibly either maybe just a rad hose, there's a loose clamp on there or you do have a leak in your rad or if it's another gasket somewhere else in the coolant system. It all it shows is that there is a leak in the system for sure. 
Next, moving on, we can also do a compression test for each of the cylinders here. Now, with that, that only dictates if there is a leak present between the combustion chamber and one of the water jackets. Now, again, you can actually pinpoint which cylinder this is happening at. So you can determine whether it's happening at, say, one of the front cylinders, one of the rear cylinders, or between maybe two cylinders. It does depend on what type of leak you do have in the system. Now, in order to determine if we do have a leak between any of the two cylinders, we can do a compression or leak down test. Now, what this will show is between the two cylinders, you will see on the compression stroke that the compression will drop because it is leaking obviously into the adjacent cylinder. Next, what you can also do is you can put a type of dye in your coolant system here. Now what this does, this will run through the system here and you can either use a specific type of glasses or a specific type of light. And what that does is this will run through the system. It'll then seep out of wherever the leakage point is and then determine where that leak exactly is and you can actually view that. Now with this being a tighter type engine bay, it is, can be a little harder to see, so you will have to either put the vehicle up on a hoist or at least elevate it off the ground with a jack and jack stands or ramps and look underneath or with a uh, mechanic's mirror. Now, the other issue with this test as well is that this will only determine if you do have a leak from the water jacket to the exterior of the engine. This does not show any internal leaks. Now, some of the issues which might mimic that you do have a faulty head gasket, as I mentioned earlier, one being that if you do accidentally have water introduced into your sump system and which will mix in with the oil. Now another one being is that you could possibly have either a faulty head or a faulty block. Now with those two being said there, with a faulty block that could possibly mean that you do have a cracked block whether it is between one of the cylinders or a water jacket and as for a head it could possibly mean that you do have a cracked head or you have a warped head now as for repair what i normally do recommend you do is that as mentioned earlier if you do have two separate head gaskets or a v configuration where your heads aren't connected on your engine is to replace both of them you already have to pull the engine apart you do have to drain the coolant system a lot of times either you'll have a timing belt or a timing chain they do have to be removed in either scenario it is already good to just take that extra step and replace the opposite one as well next if you do have the head removed it is also a good idea to take them into a machine shop that specifically does rebuilds on heads have it measured out to ensure that the head is not warped and also check for any cracks that may be present which will need to be repaired or you may have to take the extra step and go ahead and replace the head. As for a warped head, you can have that machine down so the surface is nice and smooth again, depending on the severity. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is a walkthrough video on how to determine if you do have a faulty head gasket on your vehicle. Hopefully in the future, I will be able to have access to a vehicle that is in need of repair of a head gasket and we'll be able to do further tutorials on these tests I did speak about earlier. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.